Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is David Milan and I'm an HR professional working in Australia. Today I wanted to talk to you about how I use board view in Notion. I'll be talking about my things to buy list, my family medical history tracker, and a recruitment system. So I've included timestamps in the description. If you wanna jump ahead and look at something different, please feel free to do so. And they are also on the screen now as well. So prior to using Notion, I had lots of different spreadsheets. I love a good spreadsheet. I like using them for data analysis. So, you know, VLOOKUPs, pivot tables, all that kind of stuff. But when I was using them for, for things other than data analysis, it felt like I was using the wrong tool. So I'd wanna add images to a spreadsheet and I could do it, but it was a little bit difficult. It, I'd always have to find a workaround. Uh, similarly, I'd have certain rows in a spreadsheet that I thought it would be useful to have a corresponding PDF uh, to attach to it. And I could find ways to work around it, but it never felt like I was using the, the right tool, the right system. I started using Notion about eight months ago. And at first, I must admit, I found it a little bit frustrating, a little bit difficult to get my head around. And it made me think about, uh, recently I've taught my daughter how to ride a bike. And at first she found it really frustrating. <laughs> Eventually she mastered it and now she loves it. And I think that's a great analogy for Notion. The good news is that it is a lot easier to learn Notion than it is to ride a bike. There's lots of great information out there. I wanted to give a particular shout out to Marie Poland and her YouTube channel. She has lots of great information on there and she also has a fantastic website and a course as well. I'll include a link in the description to her channel and to her website. Recommend that you have a look and learn about Notion from her as well. So one of the first things that I transferred from uh, Excel to Notion was my things to buy list. It's basically what it sounds like. It's a list of things that I wanna buy for myself or for my family. So this is the table view. I don't find it that useful. As I said, I prefer to use the board view. So if I go up here and click on my board, this will bring up all the things that I've saved in there that I'm interested in buying. And it brings up a photo of each. Sometimes the web clipper won't bring up the image from the website. And I'll go in and add it manually, which I understand some people might think that's a bit extra, they can't be bothered. But for me, I just like to see all my images there and so I can see everything uh, at a glance. So sometimes I'll add things to my board instead of buying them straight away and then I'll think about do I actually really need this, do I really want it and then later I'll come back and delete it if I don't actually need it or want it. I know, lame with no shame but uh, you know sometimes it's good to, to have a think about things and think you know do I actually really need this and, and I find this is a good way to stop and think, uh, do I actually need to buy that? And I can just wait and reflect on whether I should or not. So adding things to this table, it's really easy. For example, just say my wife mentions, you know, that she was out at a store and she saw something that she liked. And I'll say, well, did you buy it? And she'll say, oh no, I couldn't possibly. I, I bought something for the kids instead. She does that quite a bit. Um, she's a really uh, selfless person. So much so actually that she started a charity called The Village Co, uh, which puts together bags of essentials for at-risk women, so women who are fleeing domestic violence situations or maybe homelessness or their recent immigrants to the country. The charity that she started, they collect essential items and they put them in these beautiful bags and deliver them to hospitals and midwives give them to women uh, in need. So I'll include a link in the description to her charity if you are interested in having a look at it. Her organization is doing some amazing work. If you'd like to get involved, have a look at the website or make a donation, it really is making a difference. I'm digressing a little bit, but but basically uh, when she mentions that she's interested in something, I'll go into my Notion and then I'll save it. Later, I can buy her what she was interested in. So I'll show you how to do that. I'll find it, I'll click on it, then I'll go up here to Notion Web Clipper. I will click on things to buy, add it to that database. I'll click on save page, open in Notion. It'll open my database and then I'll go through and fill out the categories. So you can see in this instance, it hasn't brought through the image. So what I can do is I can open it. I will open the link. I'll go in here. I'll copy the image, go back to here, click on enter. I'll paste it in like that, wait for it to load. And then now once it's loaded, it'll show up there. And then if I want to click on here, and I can reposition it. So then now I can see all the things that I'm looking at buying. That is my things to buy database using board view. 
So I've heard lots of married couples joke about how if their marriage was a company, they would have different roles and different portfolios. My wife and I have the same joke. I may have taken a little bit too far because I have put together an org chart. So if you have a look at the top here, this is my wife. She has the role of CEO and she also has the role of EVP Domestic Excellence, Chief Financial Officer, Head of Culinary Affairs, Head of Events, Chief Medical Officer, Affection and Caring Czar. I am the EVP for Domestic Brilliance and I hold the roles of Chief Technology Officer, Head of Sanitation, Physical education czar, chief historian, and head of security. As part of my role as chief technology officer, I am responsible for information management. In the past, I was tracking our family medical history using a spreadsheet. So basically I was recording different people in the extended family who had certain medical conditions. And the reason this came about is, you know, we would be taking the kids to a medical appointment and the doctor would say, do you know if you have any of this uh, condition in your family? Uh, what is your family history? A lot of the time, it, you know, it was difficult to keep track of things. So I thought it'd be really useful to have things written down. Like I said, I started in a spreadsheet and now I have moved the information to Notion. It is, uh, you know, important to have a medical history written down. I'll include a link in the description to a website which talks about some of the reasons why you might want to do it, or you might just think that's a bit extra, I'm going to leave it. Thought it'd be a bit weird to go through my actual medical history. So I've created some fictional data. Here we have a lovely family with uh, Carlos and Sierra and their children, Wolf and Shoshana. These are names that I really wanted to name my own children, but Steph said no go. Moving on. This is the table view. If I click up here and click on family board, it will change the way that we're looking at the data. Carlos has glaucoma, tinnitus, ulcerative colitis, high cholesterol, anemia, hypertension, osteoporosis, and diabetes in his family. So that is the family history that he has. Sierra only has epilepsy and arthritis in her family. So go Sierra. It would be helpful to see who these conditions are coming from. So you can go up here to group by and change it to family member. And now you can see that Auntie Karen is responsible for the majority of the conditions. She was super nice though, rest in peace, Karen. So that's a different way of looking at the data. It would also be helpful to be able to see who it impacts. So you can go up here to properties and click on potentially effects. And now it will show who the condition is potentially going to affect in the future. Just wanted to give a quick disclaimer. This is not medical advice. There are medical professionals out there who have forgotten more than I will ever know about medicine. So I just thought I'd put that disclaimer out there. This is just a way that I think you can track your medical history. It might be useful for you. I know that it's uh, useful for me. So I wanted to show you how to create a view from scratch. So let's go up here to uh, views and click on add a view. You might call this one inheritance view and then we'll make this a board view and click on create. So now you can see all the different family members and the condition that they've had. It would be good to see who it might affect. So let's bring that up in properties. If we click on here and then click on potentially effects. Now you can see all of the people in the family who it might affect. What a time to be alive. Information at your fingertips. So earlier in my career as an HR professional, I used to do a lot of recruitment. It's something that I would recommend uh, HR professionals get a good grounding in. It is really helpful to understand recruitment and how it works and have a solid base of recruitment to draw from. So I used to use lots of different spreadsheets to track applicants and the different roles that I was handling from a recruitment perspective. I put together a system that I wish I had had when I was doing lots of recruitment. And uh, if you are doing recruitment, this might be helpful for you. So if you're working for a bigger company, you might have access to a system already. So this might not be that helpful. If you're working for a smaller company where you don't have access to a system, or maybe you're working for a bigger company where the system doesn't really work for you, this might be a, a solution for you. And I think the great thing about Notion is that you can quickly change things around and build something that will suit your needs. I haven't spent a lot of time on this one. It was really just testing a concept to see how it would work. I put it together pretty quickly. and be including links in the description to this template and the others that I've been showing. So if you duplicate it to your Notion and you change things around, drop us a line in the comments and let us know what you've changed so we can kind of learn from each other. That would be really great. Let's have a look at this. First of all, this is the table view. Again, this is basically what you would get from a standard spreadsheet. I think the board view is a lot more useful. So if I click up here and then go down to role board view, you'll see that there are three different roles that are being recruited. I included the month and the year in the title of the role. I thought that would be a helpful way to keep track of things. You might recruit more than one distribution manager in a year. So you'll see that uh, all of these applicants here are not allocated to a role or a recruiter. So let's change that. 
Let's go up to recruiter board view and let's highlight all of these ones here and then click and drag them over to Karen Filippelli. So now you'll be able to see that they're all allocated to a recruiter. If we go back to role board view, these applicants are not allocated to a role. So again, let's change that. We can just select them all and then drag them over to the educational marketing manager role. So now they have a recruiter and they have a role that they have applied for. So if we go to status view, that will bring up the different stages in the recruitment process and you can add and take things away as you need. And you'll see that uh, we have a bunch of candidates who are at no status and we have other candidates for, for different roles and different recruiters who are at different stages in the recruitment process. You can see Clay Davis and Cam Calderon are, are rejected. Uh, we're taking Renee and Felix through to a phone interview and Omar Little and Marlo Stanfield are at the interview stage. So you can see different uh, applicants and what stage they're at in the process. Let's just say you were Karen Filippelli. You don't wanna see all of the recruitment that's going on. You just wanna see your roles. So if you go up here to filter, and click on add a filter recruiter and then select Karen Filippelli. It will now show only the applicants that you are responsible for. And so then you can look at them and determine, okay, who is going to what stage? So let's just say that uh, we wanted to take Nick Miller and he's gonna be rejected and Winston and uh, Winston as oh, Sam Sweeney. So they're all now rejected. So what you can then do, I've built a little bit of a template in the page here, which is called a recruitment workflow template. Just wanted to clarify, this doesn't constitute advice. This is based on some experience that I've had in HR and things that I've seen online. So you can customize this template to how you see fit. So you click on that template, it will bring up all of those different categories and you can go in here, look at this rejection email. There's some text in there and you can record who completed the rejection email. I think it's handy to record who did what because you might have multiple people touching a recruitment process. It may not just be the one recruiter. And then you can also put the date it was completed. So there's text in there, which you could copy and then paste into an email and send it to a candidate. If your team was using Notion, you could change this here to be the person property and then people could put their names in and you'd be able to track it that way. Now you'll see that Nick has a little uh, page icon on his block, which means that there's information in his page. Let's just say that you wanted to take Jessica Day through to a phone interview. You could click and drag her there. Click on the recruitment workflow template, which I've put together. It'll bring up a rejection email, phone interview, first interview, reference check and offer. You can also embed uh, her PDF copy of her resume in that page. And so if you wanted to do a phone interview, you'd click open on that. You'd record the name of the person who was completing the phone interview, click on the date it was completed, put in some notes, that type of thing, and then record it. So then now you see Jess has a little page icon as she has some information in her block. Let's just say we're taking Jess through to the interview stage. You drag her over, click on here. You could go into interview. I've put together, you know, a little bit of an interview template which shows an introduction, explanation of behavioral based questions, and some questions that I've liked to use over the course of my career and some ones that I've seen online. So you can customize this, change around to what best suits your needs, but I thought I'd put some things in there so you can see how the process would work. That's really a, a quick overview of how you could use Notion as a recruitment system. Uh, as you can see, it's a great way to manage lots of different information and, and keep everything all in one place. And you can attach PDFs, you can uh, have different templates, different interview guides, lots of different information in there. So that has been three ways to use the board view in Notion, my things to buy list, my family medical history, and a recruitment system. I have included links to all of them in the description. Please duplicate them to your Notion. And if you change things around, let us know in the comments what improvements you've made or what's worked for you and what hasn't. I hope that that's been useful for you. Remember not to get too frustrated about Notion at first. Dude, it's so You will get it. If you'd like to see some of my other videos, I have a video where I talk about what HR and other functions can learn from services marketing based on my experience in HR and after completing a Master of Marketing. And I've also included a link to my How I Read Books in Notion video, which talks about how I manage books that I'm reading in Notion. So I hope that this has been useful for you. Uh, thank you for taking the time to watch and I will see you in the next video.